I'll yield to Congressman Bill Arrakis from Florida for his questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I don't think this is what you need. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, could, I guess you can now. I, well, I want to thank you for, for holding this hearing. Uh, of course, thank the chairman of the committee. Uh, in, in particular, I want to thank the, the parents, Ray and Deb. Uh, thank you again. Uh, it, it's extremely courageous for you to be here today publicly sharing the story of your son. And I'm so very sorry for your loss. You provide insight into the impact this crisis is having on families and demonstrate why we must address this scourge on our society as quickly as possible. We know that there was an increase in drug overdose deaths up from uh, the heartbreaking 100,000, 107,000 to be exact in 2021, and that fentanyl was present in over two thirds of these deaths. This is alarming. Now I know there's no silver bullet and we've been discussing, uh, and I believe that we need to make it permanent, uh, Schedule 1, there's no question. I don't see why this isn't passing the House and the Senate, but uh, it should be a priority. This is poison, folks, and y'all know this. This is poison. It's a weapon of mass destruction. Today, we have the opportunity to start discussing a multifaceted approach. We must do whatever we can to reduce the stigma attached to substance <clears throat> abuse disorder and addiction. We also must ensure that treatment is readily available for those in need, and we're working on that. And of course, we need to engage with law enforcement, thank you for being here today, sir, to ensure they are combating the transactional uh, and, uh, and the domestic criminal organizations that are uh, trafficking and distributing this illicit fentanyl. Uh, in November, I had the opportunity to lead a congressional delegation visit to the Arizona-Mexico border having in-depth conversations with Border Patrol agents, uh, and most of us have been to the border, uh, customs agents, and the local sheriffs. It was reiterated to me that by all stakeholders that our border is not secure and that they all are overwhelmed by this, the surge of illicit drugs that are flooding into our nation. One sheriff told me plainly that the border is a violent place and that they are at war, literally at war, with the cartels with little to no support from the Biden administration. If the media highlighted the amount of large-scale seizures these agents are conducting on a daily basis, we wouldn't hear uh, about anything else, in my opinion. Uh, here are some of the staggering headlines. Just from, uh, this is the, in the past 10 days alone, and I have the newspaper articles right here, uh, Parents charged after one-year-old dies of drug poisoning in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, very frustrating. Woman charged in four-year-old's fentanyl overdose death. From the medical examiner, 11-year-old died from fentanyl in her system, not from a fight at school. Middle-aged art teacher arrested after overdosing on fentanyl in front of students at a New Jersey public school. Norfolk deputy faints over fentanyl exposure at jail, Sheriff's Office confirms. Sadly, the global drug trade has provided the United States with these headlines, unfortunately. We must have a properly secured southern border in order to start addressing this crisis. All the stakeholders I've engaged with at the uh, Arizona-Mexico border spoke about the desperate need for resources in order to do this. Both uh, Customs and Border Patrol and local sheriffs want to be able to better detect and seize these illicit drugs. I also want to know if Mexico is doing enough. I know uh, last night I was watching uh, the Mexican president saying that he, they're doing their share. I want to know if that's the case. Uh, both. Customs and Border Patrol and local sheriffs want to be able to better detect and seize these illicit drugs. I intend to investigate uh, ways for Congress to appropriately, appropriately fund and provide all the tools they need to hold the traffickers accountable and stop the creation and spread of new fentanyl-related substances. Dr. Westlake, question. Fentanyl-related substances 
uh, class scheduling has already been in place for the last five years. Can you explain why we have continued to see an increase in fentanyl deaths? Uh, does the policy not work? And you probably explained this, but let's uh, reiterate it's so important. Does the policy not work? Or can you explain what more is happening here and what tools we need to provide these properly prevent, uh, to properly prevent overdose? Now, I will tell you, uh, you know, I had a round table with kids and, you know, you talk to the, the students uh, and they know the truth because uh, they know what their friends are doing and how we can prohibit that. Uh, so, you know, I would encourage all members to do that as well. Um, we need to get to the bottom of this, folks. This is literally war and it is a uh, weapon of mass destruction. And again, uh, what's the medical reason? I know you discussed it to a certain extent, but in layman terms, what is the medical reason for not scheduling this as a Schedule One drug? Uh, and I've heard from physicians in the past, but uh, you know I'm not convinced. Uh, and uh, and again, one one other question, and then I'll I know I've got I don't have a lot of time. Uh, is this fentanyl in, in vapes? Because these kids are, are vaping like crazy. Uh, and I know it's liquid and what have you, but is the fentanyl in vapes? vapes? And then I've heard uh, different opinions on this as well. Uh, give me the facts if you have them. What about marijuana? What about marijuana? I mean, you know, everybody's talking about marijuana uh, being a recreational drug and it should be legalized, what have you. I know that, uh, that marijuana uh, can be detrimental. Uh, particularly for children. Uh, and I, when I say children, I'm not talking about 18 and under. I'm talking about in their early 20s as well, because I consider those kids as well. So uh, if you could explain, uh, maybe give me some answers to those questions, uh, I would appreciate it very much. Sure. I'd like to focus on um, you know, kind of the reason I came here, and that was to shed light on, on what were the opposition, what, you know, whether there's scientific basis behind the, the opposition. Um, and that, you know, that's a, a, a big talking point is that fentanyl deaths are rising. It's a failed policy, a failed Trump administration policy, because that's when it came out. But that's just not, that's just not true. That's, that's confabulation. Um, you know, I, it, it's, I think it's, it's trying to pull criminal justice reform. And, you know, there's, they know that there's energy behind this, that it, this is, a, you know, this is common sense and it, it kind of has to pass. And, and so I, I think if, if there's any kind of justice in the world, and, and I, I think that, that, you know, they're, they're trying to do that, and you know they put the theoretical rights of criminals above above the kids, um, and so I, you know that that's that's I think the reason that's that's why it's not passing. I mean, it, it, it definitely accomplishes exactly what it was tended on a very narrow and specific area. There's no scientific you know basis really that that has merit to to oppose it. it once you and that's I, I created a briefer that we gave to you all staff. Um, that goes into the detail of, of how we develop the language, and you know, and, and, and it really kind of unveils the truth behind a lot of the politics and smokescreen stuff that's happening around this issue. Thank, thank you. 